Hi, it's Tammy, and we're back talking about our uh, mixed media project in encaustics for the birthday blessing celebration that we're going to be doing. And if you can, um, if you saw the first video, you'll know that we have uh, five by five squares that we cut from illustration board. And the beginning marks that you see here are where we wrote out in alcohol inks. Uh, blessed beyond measure. Those were all cut up so you can only see bits and pieces here. This is kind of a good example. And we're going to start with um, three to four coats of encaustic medium. Now um, I'm going to start while I keep talking but I like to make my own encaustic medium. You can purchase it uh, through Amazon or Dick Blick uh, depending on where you're at. Um, but it is made out of beeswax and damar resin so uh, just, I just think it's a fun process to try and make your own supplies that you use so I like to do that maybe we'll have another video explaining how to do that but I think there's already a couple on YouTube so so we start with um, a coat of wax and you want it to be a nice, even, smooth coat of wax. Now, you've seen me drip on here, and that's okay because once we get one coat of wax, we are going to need to fuse it because you want to fuse each layer, and that's how it adheres to your surface. So, I just have these propped up a little bit so it's easier to get all the way to the edge. My uh, encaustic medium is heating on uh, this griddle and I have it set with a uh, oven thermometer, an oven thermometer here. Mine's a little, uh, about 180 maybe. Um, you kind of have to experiment to see you know, how your wax reacts and what temperature you like to set your wax at. But you never want it to go over 200. Once the wax starts heating up at that high 200 degree temperature, then um, you run the risk of letting toxins uh, spread into the air, which you don't want. And there's plenty of videos out there about safety. Please make sure you read through them and you use caution with any mixed media products that you use. I do have a window open here and a fan going. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good first coat. I already did this one over here on the left. So I do like to use a torch, but I also use my heat gun and I have an iron also. You want to make sure that your flame isn't too high. Um, I just filled this so that's as low as my flame can go right now. And I have to admit, this is one of my favorite things to do, is to just watch that wax melt and see those air bubbles pop out and it smooths out to just a beautiful flat surface. And... Sometimes it's hard to get a flat surface, but um, we just go with whatever happens with the wax because the wax is really almost more in control than you are. But I do enjoy this process. Sometimes I like to overfuse my wax, and you can get some really neat effects doing it that way, also. Now, as I mentioned, I am on illustration board, which is a type of paper, so you want to be careful when you're heating up any kind of paper that you don't leave the, the flame in any one place for too long. So I keep mine moving usually in a circular fashion. I don't know if you can see those bubbles going away. But that wax just melts and smooths right out. And as the wax melts, it does have a cloudy appearance, um, but that's part of the beauty of the wax, so I kind of embrace that. 
you can buff it in the end and it gives a really nice shine. So it just depends on what kind of techniques you used. So there we go with one coat and one fusing. I'm going to keep going and do, mm, this is really soaking up the wax good. So I might need to do three or four coats, but we'll be back as soon as I'm done. So this video is going to be about collage and color. So um, what I'm going to start with is some old uh, music paper. I have some uh, vintage music books and I just ripped out some musical notes and I'm going to use that as a base on this one and then I have another piece here that um, I kind of liked. It says clap your hands and stomp your feet at the top. So I'm going to put that in the center of this one and I'm not sure what else we'll do with these but that's how we're going to start them. So when I do collage on wax. I know some people just uh, burnish it down and then add the wax on top. And sometimes what happens is is the paper actually peels up like it um, the wax soaks through it and then the paper peels up. So you don't want that. Uh, I know some people have talked about putting yes paste underneath it, but I feel like that's an acrylic product and acrylics and wax don't mix kind of like oil and water don't mix. So um, the other way I'm going to make this adhere better is I'm not going to use my torch once I put paper down. I'm only going to use um, my heat sealing iron. So in order to put this down, if I'm not going to use any paste, yes paste, or um, any kind of acrylic medium, I'm going to actually drench this in the wax before I put it down. So I'm just going to come over here to my griddle and I'm going to put a little of clear and caustic medium down and then I'm going to lay this piece of paper right into it and I don't know if you can see you can see part of that it just kind of absorbs and melts right into that wax so that's what I want so this piece is going to become covered in wax on both sides and then of course, if I had my tweezers nearby, I would use them to pick it up, but I'm not sure where I put them at the moment. So I'm gonna kind of lift it up with this tool. I'll let it cool a second because it is a little hot. So you wanna be careful you don't burn yourself. But you'll notice as you put the wax on the paper, it becomes translucent. So technically, um, I accidentally dipped into some slightly colored wax so I have a green tinge on this, so that green will probably come through. And that's okay, we're just rolling with it. Whatever happens, happens. So I'm gonna, this is already dry, so I'm gonna just go ahead and put that right on here, see if I can get it somewhat centered. Okay, let's move that out of the way. And as you can see, I have a ceramic tile here that I'm working on, so I'm gonna use use the end of this tool just to kind of no, I'm, I'm going to use this tool just to kind of rub that in and burnish it on oh, everything's shaking okay so that's pretty good so wax loves to stick to itself so um I want to make sure, I feel like I have a little bubble in there, so I don't want any bubbles. I'd rather use a metal piece, but I don't have that handy, so, because that kind of creates friction. All right, so we're going to do the same thing with this other piece, and we're going to put it in the center section of this piece. So we'll do the same thing, put a little wax down, and then lay it right in there. It just soaks it right up. So it's neat to get different kinds of papers to see what happens, to see, um, you know, if I have something on the back of this paper and it's now see-through, right? I'm gonna be able to see whatever was on the back. So, sorry, it's a little warm. <laughs> You know, so it's just interesting to see what different kinds of papers do. Mulberry papers or, you know, any of those Japanese papers are just so cool to see what happens. Move 
this up a little so you can see it. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to lay this right down there and about the center. Use my wooden stick here to kind of burnish that on. And then what we'll do is we'll add another piece or another layer of wax on top of these. Yeah, that feels good. And then we'll fuse. And then these will become, you know, integrated in. And like I said, I'm going to fuse this time with my iron instead of the torch. The torch is just a little too hot when you start dealing with paper. And then sometimes when if the corner squeezes up or something, then you can catch the paper on fire. So that's never a good thing. So we're going to just go ahead and do a coat here. Got that good. And I have my heating iron warmed up here. And I'm just going to very gently go over this wax. And because the paper is so thin, this is going to melt the wax underneath the paper too. Okay? So my hope is that I'm just going to put a couple layers on and it's just going to become solid. Just one piece. It's, it's going to just embed itself in the wax. And then from there, we can add more layers. Okay. So I'm going to finish doing that and um, then we'll come back with our next 5x5 um, five five square and see what we're going to do with that one. So the two music pieces I'm going to put off to the side just to let them solidify, cool, um, and make sure I have enough layers of wax on top. Really the best way to be able to tell that you have enough layers of wax is just to feel it and you'll know if it feels like it's solidified with your background. So next we're going to work on these two and um, because we're doing collage and color I thought it would be fun to add just a piece of tissue paper and see how that um, turns a little translucent and see what we can do with that. So um, let's see, I have to stop saying um, don't I? We're going to go ahead and just put this down in whatever wax is still there. I think I've got enough on my brush to attach that. See if I can pick this up. Usually I do have a tweezers for this, but for some reason I did not pull that out yet. So I'm going to go ahead and lay this piece. I think I'm going to just lay it right here. I want to get it right up next to that edge. There. Oops. All right. So, so again, this piece is already cooled. Um, might have been better if I did it while it was a little bit warm. So I'm going to go ahead. See if I can burnish this down. Before I add another piece of wax to the top and fuse it on there. Yeah, so you can see, I don't know if you can see in the angle there, right there. So it's really just about the tactile feeling of whether it's ready for the next coat of wax. You should be able to tell. All right, so that one's going to be ready. Now I'm going to I'm going to take this piece. And I'm thinking I think I'm going to hang it from where this little black mark is. Then I might, I actually have um, a feather that I think I'm going to also show you how to embed a feather. Oh, I might 
go that way. Hmm. Yeah, I think I might do that instead. And that's the beauty is wax is very easy to change your mind with. So let's go ahead and get this piece coated in wax. So there's a good example. Now I have a little tear, so I can probably pick this piece up still. But I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go with it. I kind of like the um, wabi-sabi accidents that happen. So this piece we're going to go ahead and put right there. Just burnish this one down. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll go ahead and add another layer of wax and fuse it. And honestly, this is just the beginning layers. I'm not really sure um, where I'm going to take these. But that's what I love about the process. So with this iron, if you have one of these, I'm just going very lightly. You could also use a heat gun at this stage if you have paper that you want to adhere down. But any kind of method of melting the wax works. So I'm going to move those out of the way, and um, I have one more piece that I'm going to show you in one second. So for this last piece, we are just going to add some color directly by using, um, this is an r &F encaustic medium mixed with black pigment, and this one is Encaustico's Hot Sticks in a primary red color. So um, I'm just going to use some regular painter's tape and I think I'm going to make, I'm just going to lay it down and make two strips. So I'm going to do, you know what, I think I'm going to make this a red strip, the skinny one, and I'm going to make this whole area black. That's what I'm going to do. So when you want to make a skinny line like this, there's a couple different ways of doing it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add clear wax, I just have some here, on top of this to kind of seal that tape line because I don't want the red wax to get underneath the tape. I want it to be kind of a, a clean line. And actually, I think I have a little bit of black left on my griddle here from before. I'm actually hoping I do. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can mix that, maybe get a little bit of a muddy black, or a muddy red, so excuse me. Maybe not too much. That's okay, it'll be a brighter red. And then I'm just going to go right over the top of that. And in order for that to be a solid color, I'm going to have to do a couple coats, I think. I think I want it to be solid. I don't know. We'll see. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and take um, this pigment block. And 
I'm going to put it on a spot over here because I think I want this to be pretty solid too. Now these are heavily concentrated. Oh, I already have some. So you could mix um, some of your encaustic medium with that. And as I'm doing this, I realized I forgot to put my clear coat underneath my tape. So I'm going to try and be extra careful next to my tape here. So we'll see. If we don't get a straight line, then that was the way it was meant to be. <laughs> So make sure when you're um, using other brushes, well any brushes, all of these brushes are natural bristles. So think about if you put a synthetic bristle on your griddle at 200 degrees, it's going to melt. <laughs> so you don't want that. You don't want it to melt. So these are all natural bristled brushes. So I'm going to go back to using my torch. Go ahead and torch this. And after, I have a little bit of breeze coming in here, but after you have a couple layers of wax down, when you torch, you really don't need to over fuse it. You just want, so that piece right there, see how it all melted away? I kind of over fused it a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to add a couple more coats anyway. So I'm just trying to smooth this black out. Oh, and I actually love when I overfuse it and I get those cell-like structures. I think that looks so cool. And I think that's just um, based on the weight of the pigments. So black must be heavier than my natural pigment. So that's what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and let that cool a second, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a couple more layers and keep fusing. So that's really all we're going to do today. I'm going to use some of these pieces in future examples and go through other techniques, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, go ahead and like and subscribe, or visit my website at TammyHayman.com. Thanks. Have a great day.